We're so blessed. Miss Colleen, she aids in our worship time with her beautiful music and she pierces our heart with the needs that she brings forth to us and we have really truly been blessed to have you as, as part of our church and know you have not ever formally moved your membership and all of that Baptist stuff that we like to do but you're one of us and we love you dear Amen. You, it, you bless our heart okay? we're grateful to have you really are we're glad to have Stanley with us this morning Amen. I was worried about you I, I thought about you earlier and I thought Oh God, he didn't hear, but you made it, didn't you? <laughs> Better late than never, right? right. <laughs> All right, got here just in time to hear what God's got to say to you. So we're glad that you're here. I'm glad each and every one of you is here. Did everyone enjoy the snow this week? Amen. Amen. My wife's going to take off next week and go up to Colorado, and they're going to play in the snow. And I tell y'all what, we got six inches of snow in Welch, Texas. That's like the wow. third or fourth time in 60-something years I can remember having that much snow. And, uh, yes, we're rednecks because we took our sleds and we went down to the trash pit and we went sledding in the trash pit. You know, you might be a redneck, okay? And uh, so, but we had a great time. I loved it. But I was, it was Thursday morning at Welch, Texas, recorded four degrees for a love. Four degrees. I can count that high, y'all. <laughs> and I still got fingers left if they ain't frostbit. But it was cold. Mm -hmm. But that afternoon, it was 50 degrees. Mm -hmm. Only in West Texas can you have a 46-degree <laughs> yeah. temperature differential yeah. with snow yeah. on the ground. Yeah. Um, it, it just it blows me away. And I was so glad to see it warm. She can go off to the mountain. She can spend three or four days up there. They can freeze. I, it reminded me. Because it took me about 30 minutes to get all of my stuff on. You know, I had my ski boots, my insulated coveralls, my ski gloves, my coat, my toboggan, my, you know. And the time I got through, I was breathing real hard, and I was too tired to get out the door and do anything by the time I got. It was, I it just, I, cold weather wears me out, man. I, it really does. And so, so it's coming back this way. I, you know, I enjoy it for short periods. Very short periods, but I like for it to get warm again. I really like that 75, <laughs> and I can sit on my porch in my rocking chair and let that sun kind of bake in on me, And uh, which reminds me, I, when I talked to Miss Bonnie, she had been outside yesterday afternoon for a couple of hours in the sun, and she said she enjoyed it so much. It was a beautiful day, and the sun shining on her, and I asked her if she wore her bikini out, and she said, oh, no. She wasn't going to do that. <laughs> anyway, I had a, had a great visit with her, and, and uh, uh, really in a good mood and good attitude, and she was really wanting to talk, and so anytime you have an opportunity to give her a call, she would really like to visit with you, and uh, she really likes to likes to visit, that she's in good spirits and got a good attitude. You know, Valentine's Day is coming up, and of course, us guys, we all get petrified because we're hoping that we buy the right gift for our woman, and women don't seem to think that they need to do anything for us guys, but anyway, yeah, it's just another one. I'm going to do something for you. I'm going to let you have the TV button. She's going to leave all next week. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That's right. You I can cook remote. whatever I want. I can have the TV remote. So <laughs> she is taking care of me. So uh, going to appreciate that. But uh, we, we talk a lot about love. I, I don't think there is a way to count all of the songs that have been written about love, is there? I don't think there's a way to count all of the poems that have been written about love. Love is something we talk about, we discuss, and yet love is probably one of the most misunderstood, misconceived things that is out there today. Amen. It, you know, we, we talk about it constantly, and... But fortunately, we have God's word that gives us the truth. God's word is the truth. And it defines and it shows us and it tells us what love is. And we're going to read in, in Luke chapter 10, verses 30 through 37. Y'all go ahead and be finding your way over there. We have a story that shows us. And I learned better by <coughs> seeing than I do by hearing most of the time, don't you? And so here is a story that shows us several attributes 
of God's love. <coughs> and if we are a Christian, we are to have those same attributes of love ourselves, are we not? Luke, 10. Luke chapter 10, verses 30. Through 37, it's a story we don't normally associate with Valentine's Day, but it is a wonderful, beautiful story of, of love in action. And it's the, the story of the Good Samaritan. And so let's read. <clears throat> Jesus replied and said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among robbers, and they stripped him and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. And by chance, a priest was going down on that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite also, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, who was on a journey, came upon him, and when he saw him, he felt compassion, and came to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them, and he put, on, put him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and whatever you spend, when I return, I will repay you. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the robber's hands? And he said, The one who showed mercy towards him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do the same our most gracious Father in heaven. Lord God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity. And Father, as we begin to look at love and think about love this week, God, help us to better understand your love. Father, your love is so deep and so wide and so high that our finite minds cannot begin to fully grasp. But God, you show us in small part what we are to do here as, as Christian brothers and sisters here on this earth, how we are to love people just the, exactly the same way that you love us and care for us. God, I thank you for each person that you have brought here this morning. God, I just ask that you will use me today, Father, as your empty vessel Remove any pride, any arrogance, any thoughts of self today. And Father, just let your spirit pour through me and let your words pour out of me that we may all have a deeper understanding of who you are and the love that you show for us. I ask all of this in your precious and holy name. Amen. 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 The first thing I want us to see about God's love in this story is that God's love is unconditional. Amen. His love is unconditional. Let's, but to understand that, we have to understand the, the first man traveling along was Jewish. That was That is understood from his writing, the, the way it's written, the, the, the terminology was a, a Jewish man was traveling down the road and he is set upon by robbers. Do you know Life comes at us pretty hard sometimes, doesn't it? Amen. It's and, and sometimes it ain't nothing that we have done. It's no fault of our own. We're just minding our business, and yet life comes at us and hits us hard. And we are in need of someone to show us love. Well, here's this good Jewish man traveling along, and these robbers set down upon him, and a Samaritan has compassion on him. Well, what's the big deal about that? A Samaritan is looked down upon by Jews. They were denigrated. They were deemed unworthy of love. They were deemed unworthy of any kind of interaction or intermingling. Samaritans were persona non grata because they were a crossbreed individual from back when the northern tribes were taken over by the Assyrians and the Assyrians sent representatives there and they intermarried and, and, and all with the, the people. And so they're, they're mixed breed. They're, 
they worship in a different place. They're, they're not one of us. <coughs> they are somebody that we would, the Jews would look down their nose at. And yet, the Samaritan, the person who has been shown no mercy, no ingathering from the Jewish people is the one who showed love and compassion towards the Israelite, is he not? Amen. And to me, that's the unconditionalness of God's love. The one who, I, I would not have any compassion for somebody like that. He deserved it. I'm glad he found, you know, got his just rewards because of the way he's treated me. Right? Have you ever said that? I'm not going to do anything for them because of the way they treated me. Have you ever, have you ever done that? Mm -hmm. And yet, how did God love us? <laughs> Romans 5 and 8 says, God demonstrates his love towards us and that while we were yet Sinners, while we were God's enemy, he loved us enough to send his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's the way we are to love folks. Those that don't look the same as us, those that don't dress the same as us, those that don't fit in the same socioeconomic group as we do, our mortal enemies, we are to love them unconditionally. It wasn't anything that the Israelite had done to deserve the Samaritan's love, was it? Just the fact that he was a living, breathing human being. He was God's creation. And that's the way God loves us. Not because of what we have done, not because of what we have earned, not because of what we deserve, but he unconditionally loves us. Amen. Amen. Matthew 5 and 44 says it very well. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Do I really got it? Now, it's, it's, it's easy for me to love you folks because y'all are good people. Y'all like me. Y'all smile when I walk up. You give me a hug. You're, it's easy to love our brothers and our sisters, it's easy to love those who love us back, is it not? <laughs> but God loved us while we were his enemy. <coughs> Unconditionally, he showed the same amount of love for Kenny <clears throat> as he did for Clyde. Amen. Because we all were his enemy at one point in time. Amen. So God's love is unconditional, and that's the way we are to love. We, we are to take our eyes off ourselves, and we are to love those who are unlovable. Are we not? Amen. You know, Miss Colleen is, is doing a... She's shaming me, essentially, because of the work that she is doing with our homeless people in love. Right. The way she just opens her house and makes herself available to those that, you know, most of us ain't real sure we want to hang out with. We're not real sure we want to be around those people. And yet you do that. And that, you inspire me. And yet you also shame me that I'm not as giving and as loving. And it shows a need in my life of what I need to do. So we see how unconditional God's love is, but did you know God's love is also rather inconvenient, is it not? Have you ever noticed that? The opportunity to show love to someone never comes up at a good time, does it? <laughs> it's never when we're just sitting around, nothing to do. Oh, I got plenty of time to go help out so-and-so, or I got time... No, it's always 2.30 in the morning and Justin's stuck in the bar ditch and I got to go pull him out and, you know, my pickup won't start and the roads are muddy and the chain broke. You know, it, it's always an inconvenient time. Here was this Samaritan. 
He's on a business trip. He's got places to be. He's got things to do. He's got deals to, to work. And, and, you know, he's, he's in a hurry. But it was rather inconvenient for him to have to stop and help this guy on the side of the road. And that's the way God's love is for us. It was inconvenient. Do you really think it was convenient for Christ? We sang about it a while ago when it's in that song, I Gave My Life for Thee. He gave up the glory of heaven. <coughs> he gave up life in heaven and trapped himself in a physical body and came and lived in a sinful world so that he could be spit upon, so that he could be ridiculed, so that he could be beat upon, so that he could be hung upon a cross, sitting between two criminals and killed. You really think that was convenient for Christ? You know, the, the Levite and the uh, uh, priests that were going by they saw the opportunity to minister, did they not? They saw the opportunity to love someone, but it was inconvenient for them. It would have made them ceremonially unclean. It would have delayed their journey, and I'm sure they had great godly things that they needed to go do. They were the ones who should have shown love to a fellow Israelite, should he not? Amen. And yet they didn't because it was too inconvenient. They didn't even bother with them because it would have made their life more difficult. And you know, love is hard. <laughs> Do your kids ever get sick when everything, <coughs> on your day off, when you have nothing planned, the, there's nobody at the doctor's office and all you have to do is just walk over, walk in, get your shot and come home. Oh no. <coughs> they don't start running that 104 degree temperature until <coughs> two in the morning and you rush them to the emergency room and you have to sit for six hours because there's a backlog at the emergency room. And yet you do it, don't you? Because you love the kids. And what about your mortal enemies? Who God loved was his mortal enemies and he did it in an inconvenient manner. It was not convenient for him. He could have said fooey on them. They don't deserve it anyway. And, and we would have not had any opportunity. No, we, we would have had nothing to, to argue with, would we? And yet he loved us anyway. Amen. In spite of the troubles that he had to go through out of the pain that he had to endure, the, the shame and the ridicule that he endured. It was not convenient. And love is not convenient for us. The third thing I want us to see here, love cost. Valentine's Day coming up. How many of you priced a dozen roses lately? <laughs> or a nice little ring or some earrings or even a big box of Payne Burns chocolates, you know? Man, that's expensive, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's expensive. Love cost us. What did it cost the Samaritan? Well, it cost him his time. It cost him his efforts. I mean, he, he worked at it hard. He didn't just stop by and check on him and head down the road. No, he bandaged him up. He loaded him up. He carried him to the... It, it, he spent a lot of time, but then the big, big thing, it cost him money. It cost him financially to love because where does most of our pocket, our, our hearts lie in our pocketbook, right? Is that not where we, we look at things? You know, like I said, with the Valentine's Day coming up, we, we look at things it, the, to show our love, and that costs a lot of money. But it, it's 
the word years the cost of real love. Because real love requires what? An investment of ourself. And one of the costliest things I think of loving someone, loving anyone, is the heartbreak that's going to come from it. Because our hearts will be broken. We will be disappointed. But we have to put ourselves out there just as God put himself out here for us, for God so loved the world that he gave what? His only begotten son. What would be more precious that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life? God was willing to give all. He cost him dearly to love you and me. And as Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 7, but whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Are you willing to pay everything that you have? Man, it costs money to love our children, doesn't it? Guys, just about the time you think you've got enough money saved up for that new toy that you want, mm, no. Kids need a new pair of tennis shoes. They need some pants because they've outgrown them. Okay? As we get older, it costs to love when you get that medical diagnosis of a severe illness. We're going to have to spend time in the hospital, and it's going to cost. You're well aware, I know. You know how much chemo treatments cost these days? It's been... 15 years now and I can remember hers were running $75,000 per treatment per treatment and that wasn't counting the medicines that she had to take in between the treatments it's unconscionable but it didn't matter I was willing <coughs> to pay whatever I needed to pay thankfully we had good insurance back then it didn't cost out of my pocket a whole lot. But you know, we say that we love, and I am so proud of how much stuff we have donated to Miss Colleen to help with our homeless folks. But if it cost you anything, and I'm going to speak for me, it ain't cost me a penny yet. The things I have brought to her and donated her, some of them have been really, really nice new coats. But they were coats that were given to me by a seed company and they don't fit or I don't wear them or I don't need them or I got too many of them. I'm more than happy to give those because that hasn't cost me anything. How many of you have gone out and spent your own money to take care of these homeless folks? Hello? I don't see no hands going up. No, we're, we're willing to give from our excess. But are you willing to give from your want? For someone that you love, I mean, I'd, I'd do anything for Miss Nancy because I love Miss Nancy. And I, 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 whatever I needed to, I'd do for you. It may cost me my time. It may cost me some effort. It may cost me some money. But, I, you know, but these people that I don't even know, am I willing to give up anything for them? to truly love the way God loves. Are we willing to give up what we have for them? The final point, I'm watching the clock, so I don't want to go too long, is that love is committed. You notice the Samaritan not only stopped, he went above and beyond in treating the wounds. He loaded him up on his donkey, made himself walk, you know, he sacrificed, right? And he carried the man to an end, found him care, paid for his care, and he says, I'll be back in a couple of days. He's making a long-term commitment to demonstrate that love, and when he comes back, he's going to pay some more. He's going to give some more. He's going to unconditionally love some more. We know it's not convenient for him to come back in a couple of days, but he's going to do it anyway. It's because he is making a commitment to love. You know, we look today, we see today, so many marriages 
that fail because we don't really commit to one another. We say, I will, but then we put a condition on it of, well, I will as long as you look a certain way. I will as long as you cook a certain meal. I will as long as you make enough money to keep me in a way I'm accustomed to. Right, ladies? <laughs> uh, Billy and Kathy, that's too, y'all are laughing too much there. Yeah, I hit home with that. And we have marriages that never even begin because people are afraid to commit. Oh, because they don't want to suffer the heartache. They don't want to suffer the consequences somewhere down the road or, hey, a better offer may come up down the way. And so we never commit. I know a young couple that's dated for like five years, six years. Finally, the young man decided to make a commitment. But God made a commitment to us, did he not? 1 Corinthians 4, or excuse me, 13 and 8 tells us, it says it real simple, love never fails, love never ends, love never goes away, love don't quit. And we need to be committed. It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. It's not going to be easy, and it will never be convenient. It's going to cost us a whole lot. It's going to cost us Financially, it's going to cost us emotionally. It's going to cost us spiritually. But God's called us to love people unconditionally in spite of how they act, in spite of how they look, in spite of the things that they do. What if God had given up on you? What if God had said, I'm going to love you this long, and if you hadn't become the way I want you to become, then I'm done with you. He says God keeps his promises not the way he's slow to keep his promises it seems to us like because God don't want none to perish because he loves each and every one of us he wants to give everybody that opportunity Amen. to come to know him. Amen. But love makes a commitment and when it makes that commitment it sees it through to the end. Amen. And the end with God when? Never. It's eternal. God will love us eternally. That's why he gives us that eternal life. So, husbands, love your wives unconditionally, inconveniently, no matter the cost. Yeah, I know, David. It's getting deep, ain't it? <laughs> I, can, I can tell by the look on your face. Make that commitment to love her. But the harder thing, the harder thing for you and I to do is that person that's not so lovable, are we willing to love them anyway? Are we willing to pay the cost anyway? Are we willing to go out of our way and be inconvenienced? Are we willing to commit to loving those people? Love is hard. Love has fantastic rewards, but man, it has some horrendous costs too sometimes. The heartbreak. Watching a child go down a bad road. Helping someone that just continually makes a mess out of their life and continuing to stand by them and pick them up and lift them up and continuing to do what needs to be done. And it's hard, isn't it? Yeah, it hurts sometimes. But that's how God loved us. Amen. And I'm trying to remind us today, we are to love our fellowship, but we're to love outside our fellowship. Right. Do you have a concern for somebody that does not even know Christ? Right. If we have God's love in our heart, then we must share that love with those that we come into contact with. 
just exactly the way. He set the example for us, right? So we need to do it exactly the way he's done it to the best of our ability. And it is not easy. Only God can love that way. But if you give us the example, Amen. let us follow it and be obedient to it. Amen. All right. Would you stand with me, please? Our most gracious Father God, I thank you for today. Father, we thank you for your great love for us. And Father, <coughs> help us to take our eyes off ourselves and, and, and quit patting ourselves on the back about how much you loved us, God. And help us to see our need to give that love to someone else. Father God, you demonstrated your love. You showed your love. You gave your love. Father, that is what we are to do. We are to take that love and go out and put it into action and, and show it to this world around us. And God, if we will just love people the way you have loved us, that power can change this world. And Father God, that power can change me. Father, if there's anyone here this morning that needs anything, Father, that they need to get right with you. Father, give them the, the strength this morning. Help them to see your love today and know that they are loved no matter what they are, no matter what they've done, no matter where they've gone. Help them to see that this church is accepting of them. Give them the strength and the boldness to step out and take care of those problems today. I ask this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. As we see, God is speaking to you today. Thanks, 412.